The week of December 22nd to December 28th, 1987, will without a doubt go down into U.S. history as the worst all in the family massacre that happened in a little town called Dover, Arkansas. Gene Simmons killed 14 of his family members before driving and shooting two more people with a total of 16 people shot dead. This story is one of the most mind-blowing stories you guys will ever hear. So I'll give you guys as much details and information as I can. This was a massacre that was fueled by jealousy, hatred, and incest. So Ronald was born in 1940 in Chicago, Illinois. In 1957, he ended up dropping out of school when he was 17 and enlisting in the U.S. Navy. While he was stationed in Washington, this is where he met his wife. Um, now, I'll be honest, I, I don't know how to say her first name. Um, she went by Becky, but her birth name um, is, is a little unique, and so I apologize if I get it wrong, but it's B-E-R-S-A-B-E. -E. They got married in 1960 in New Mexico. Over the next 18 years, Ronald and his wife Becky had seven kids and he ended up retiring from the U.S. Navy in 1979. So in all outward appearances, Ronald and his wife and their seven children seemed to have a good life. Um, until you look further into their family history, you'll see soon enough that they're not the picture-perfect family that, that they portrayed. 1981, Sheila, his oldest daughter, who was 17, was molested by Ronald numerous times and she actually got pregnant gave birth to a girl named sylvia gale and so this child was a product of of sheila being molested by her father ronald sheila ended up moving out of the house um, with sylvia and uh, sheila eventually got married to a guy so that the teachers called the authorities because um, they suspected that Ronald uh, was molesting Sheila. And once Sheila got pregnant, most of the people in the town had a suspicion that, that Ronald was the father. Becky knew this. She, she stated that she despised him for years and was attempting to try to leave him. Um, she said, I don't want to live the rest of my life with um, what she called Ronald dad. I don't want to live the rest of my life with, with dad. I'm a prisoner here, and so are the kids. She wrote that in a letter a few days before the murders took place. December 22nd, 1987, the morning of, Ronald started his massacre of killing his entire family. His first person he killed was his wife. He next killed his oldest son, Gene. Um, by shooting both of them in the head. Next, he killed his three-year-old granddaughter, Barbara, by strangling her. He then dumped their three bodies in, in a pit that he actually had them dig. He actually had them dig their own graves, but of course they had no idea. Under the pretense that they needed a new outhouse, as they lived on a rural farm which had no plumbing apparently. It doesn't really say, but I guess the other children were away I don't know if they're visiting relatives or just hanging out somewhere else, but either way, more of the family came and he started killing again. He told his children once they arrived that he had presents for them and he wanted to give it to them one at a time. Next to go was his 17-year-old daughter, Loretta, whom he strangled and held under the water. The next three children, Eddie, Marianne, and Becky, uh, were all killed in the same way. So he killed all them and then waited four days until December 26th. Um, that's when the rest of the family were due to show up for the family dinner. Uh, first was Ronald's son, Billy, and his wife, Renetta. Um, he shot and killed both of them as soon as they showed up. He then strangled and drowned Billy and Renetta's 20-month-old son named Trey. 
Um, so it would have been his grandson. Uh, then Ronald shot and killed his oldest daughter, Sheila, of course, the one that he sexually abused, molested. He killed his daughter slash granddaughter that, that Sheila bore to him. She was seven years old, um, Sylvia Gale, and uh, he killed her as well. He killed Sheila's husband, Dennis McNulty. And then finally, another grandson, 21-month-old Michael. Uh, he then laid all the other bodies out in kind of like a row. Um, he covered all of them up except Sheila. Two of the grandsons he dumped in, in some abandoned cars on the property, but the rest were either in a pit or lined up in a row. All right guys, so uh, my best interpretation of everything that I learned um, points me to this house uh, or address up on the hill. Um, again, the, the original house was bulldozed. The address would have been 274 Broomfield. I just checked the mailbox. Uh, just talked to one of the neighbors um, that lives right there behind behind me, and uh, he he said that the Simmons house was was the one I was referring to, the one that I pointed out. Um, so that means that um, the house that I showed you on camera that is that is where the Simmons house used to be. So I'm glad that I had someone in the area that confirmed it. Um, he. He pulled out his driveway and he's like, yeah, the, he pointed and he's like, yeah, that, that's where the Simmons house used to be. And uh, it's right there on the left where he was pointing. Long search over, but uh, we found we found where the house was. So sometimes all it takes is just asking a local and thankfully uh, he knew where it was. Um, so two days later on December 28th, he drove into the nearby town of Russellville, which is where I am right now. And he went to a law firm called Peel and Eddie and he ended up shooting and killing the secretary there, 24-year-old Kathy Kendrick. He shot her four times in the head. Next, he drove to Taylor Oil Company, where he shot the owner, Rusty Taylor, um, who survived, um, but he also ended up shooting employee Jim Chafin, um, who was killed. Uh, next, uh, he made his way to a mini mart, uh, which is where he used to work. He shot two employees who survived. His last stop was another former employment of his called Woodline Motor Freight, uh, where he shot a lady named Joyce Butts. And then that is when the massacre finally was put to an end. Finally, Ronald Simmons was arrested for all 16 of the murders and, of course, was given the death penalty. This is something apparently that he was totally fine with. It sounds like he kind of gave up on appeals and just let it roll through. So they executed him uh, June 25th, 1990. So it's, it's just, it's sad. 14 members of the, of the Simmons family lost their lives all because their dad was just a jealous, egotistical, just terrible man. And two innocent people lost their lives, um, again, simply because they happened to know him. And uh, if I forgot to mention, um, Ronald was also infatuated with um, the secretary um, that he shot and killed. And uh, so he basically was in love with his own daughter and the secretary. Uh, so only four children, only four of the Simmons children are buried here in Briggsdale, Colorado, and uh, Becky, the wife. So five people of the Simmons family total buried here in Briggsdale, Colorado. And again, the rest are buried in different parts of Arkansas, which again, I couldn't get to. And so since I was driving back home to Washington through uh, Colorado, I decided to stop here and show you guys at least this part.
So anyway, thank you guys for watching.